So given the financial situation that many people are facing right now, getting into photography might feel a little bit like, um, uh -uh. no, uh -uh. because let's face it, photography can be bloody expensive, but it doesn't have to be. You see, there are a wealth of cameras out there now for the last two decades of digital. And today I'm going to show you a couple of them, which I think will fit the bill, especially if you're just starting out. First up, we've got the uh, Canon Rebel XTI or 400D that came to us sometime in the late Cretaceous period and um, it's great. It's a very bare bones system. Um, video features, none. Autofocus, I think it's got nine points, one of which is actually usable. It's very, very basic, but this is a good thing for a beginner because you won't get distracted by all of those fancy features and aids that come in a modern mirrorless camera. This thing is just pure photography. Change your shutter speed, change your aperture, change your ISO, take some pictures. And this thing can be had, this whole setup here, can be had for about a hundred pounds. The camera is about 30 to 40 pounds. This is the Nifty 50, the, um, the cheap plastic -y version two. Um, you can get these for about 46 pounds. I've seen one for recently. Battery grip, I only got this because I've got big dumb hands and it makes the camera a little bit more comfortable. This cost me five pounds used. It's a very affordable setup and it will produce the goods. Next up, we've got the Panasonic Lumix GF2 um, and on there we've got the Olympus 45mm f1.8. Now this again falls around the £100 mark, but about 90% of that is this lens. So if you wanted to make this even cheaper, just dump a kit lens on there and you're good to go. Now I got this Lumix dead cheap on eBay. I think it was about 15 pounds delivered. So look out for stuff like this. It's got a little bit of screen damage, but the screen is fully functional. It's fine if you're not worried about the aesthetic of it. Um, but yeah, again, a great setup. So I'm gonna take both of these setups. I'm gonna go shoot and show you what I can do with them. Trailer. Yeah. We're going to be crossing the road. This is the type of shot where I want to be in the middle of the road to shoot him right there and he's in the middle, but I'm going to die if I try it today. No, you're my photo. <laughs> So far, you've been on top of the Canon 400D. Um, I want to sort of break down this setup real quick. The camera itself, you can get for about 30 to 40, Jesus, about 30 to 40 pounds. The lens I'm using is the 50 mm f1.8 version two, the cheap plasticky one, which can be had for about 50 pounds. The battery grip cost me five pounds. Um, you can cheapen this setup even further by just simply using a kit lens, an uh, 18 to 55 thing that you can pick up for about 30 pounds. So this is a really effective setup and definitely friendly on the bank. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the Lumix GF2 and the 45mm f1.8 from Olympus. Now see what we can get with that. Um, again, that set up if we break it down. The lens is about 100 pounds uh, on the used market and the camera I got for 15 pounds delivered. So it was about 11 pounds and some change plus postage. So absolute bargain. Um, great setup though. Definitely not gonna break the bank like that. And again, if you wanna cheapen that down, stick a kit lens on there and you're probably saving yourself maybe 50 pounds. Right, we are on the Lumix GF2 with the Olympus 45mm f1.8. Again, not a very expensive setup. This camera cost me 15 pounds posted. The lens is all of the money in this setup, so you could easily make this much cheaper by going for a kit lens or 
something cheaper than this 45 mil. Against this window here and sort of you know shoot across it. Yeah. To try and get some abstract looking shit. I'm not gonna be in your shot, am I? Now another way to keep the cost down of photography in general is to use third party lenses. Now this is one of the ones from TT Artisans but there are many companies who do these kind of manual primes for APS-C and Micro Four Third systems. Um, TT Artisan, you've got Seven Artisans, you've got Pergier, you've got Samyang and all, all kinds of other companies all make these and the reason they're so cheap is not because they're optically inferior, it's because there's no electronics in them, they're fully manual but they're really good lenses. Another option is to buy an adapter and use vintage lenses like this one. This is an M42 mount. These are meant for SLR cameras and you can pick these up anywhere from like £10. And some of them are really good. The old coatings on them give a really unique look. And you get something like this one, a 135mm prime, which would otherwise cost you, you know, several hundred pounds if you're buying one for a native system. And you can get this for like 10 or £15. And finally, and probably the most important, is look at older systems. Um, Nikon, for example, produced the Nikon D800. It was one of the cameras that I owned a couple of years ago. And it still produces pro quality images. 36 megapixels, all of the dynamic range you're ever going to need. But those systems lack the modern features, so they don't have great autofocus and such as that. But they still produce fantastic images if you know what you're doing. So looking at a camera like that and comparable cameras from different systems will offer you pro level image quality at a fraction of the cost. You'll maybe get a D800, for example, for like four to five hundred pounds, as opposed to like two grand a minimum for a modern mirrorless. So so definitely look at the used market in order to keep the cost of photography down because you're not getting worse gear you're just getting slightly older gear all right so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching i will see you in the next one